<laughs> Let's do it. Hi, guys. How are you? So is, is, is that something that... Uh, is that something you like being known for, the catchphrase, or, or not? You know what, it's actually, <laughs> you know, I, I rarely get, get uh, you know, approached with that, but last night we were in a bar here in Chicago, and this drunk dude came up, and he started hugging me and saying that, and so. Sorry, <laughs> you I'm like, all right, dude. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, buddy. Thanks, buddy. <laughs> um, well, I think it's really interesting what we heard from Naveen Jain uh, just prior to this, talking about uh, education reform and how, yeah. you know, one thing that he said that struck me uh, was that uh, our education system is not necessarily broken, um, that it is merely obsolete. And that's actually something that you are touching on in this book, that uh, the system isn't necessarily failing. Um, so talk to us about why we think it is. Well, well, that's a big, that's a big thing, what you said. Let me just kind of start a little bit and just say, you know, I'm obviously I'm a movie maker. I've been making movies since um, the age of you guys, the, the kids in the audience <laughs> there. And, um, and what happened was on a, on a location scout uh, for The Happening, which I made with Mark Wahlberg, I, I look, it was looking for a high school. And we got out of the van and went to, to a, a, a high school, and it was this incredible experience. I walked into the high school, and some kids started to recognize me, and the teachers started coming out, and everybody was like, the, like everyone kept came coming over, and it was exciting, and everybody was, you know, are you making a movie here? Are you making a movie in our school? Can I die? Can I die? And I was like, hey, hey, I'm just checking it out. I'm just checking it out. Maybe, maybe. And then it was so fun and exciting. Then we got in the van, and we drove like for four minutes. This, I live in Philly. Um, and I, I shoot all my movies in Philadelphia. I write them all, make them all there. And um, we got out of the van four, like four minutes later, and we got to this school, and it was a completely different experience. It was um, metal detectors and guards, and everybody's heads were down, and it was very, it was just, a, it, was, it, was, it was not a great place. And um, to, to look at the classrooms to see if I wanted to shoot there, they had to unlock, they had bars on them, and they, uh, they unlocked them. And the whole floor of the school was shut down because there was too much, you know, drug use and, and they couldn't keep track of everything, so they just shut it down. And the theater was half burnt down by somebody. This was, this was my visit to this school. And it, it's, it so upset me. And the kids were um, not in the same place. They, they, one of them looked at me and were, kind of recognized me and then decided that was not possible and walked away. And that the shaking of the head that that's not possible is what we're talking about. And I, ultimately, I think it started a journey for me for like four and a half years while I was making movies. I was running around the country and meeting education people. And all I really wanted to know was what, what's been, what works? What's been proven? Do, do, do you know? Like when I ask, you know, I'm from a family of doctors. And when I ask, you know, you, you say, is smoking bad for you? Yes, it's bad for you. And here's the research that says that. And I wanted those answers. And I didn't, wasn't getting them four and a half years ago. And I was meeting everybody and had all different experiences. Yeah, and you, had, you, you and your wife started a foundation. And you had already right. done a lot of work in various areas of helping people. Yeah. But uh, this really just became a real passion for you. It, it did. You know, we, we, we have a small foundation. And we tried different things. And some of them less successful than others. And, 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 and we ultimately came to the understanding about education. And really, my wife's always ignited by everything um, she gets inspired. But I, you know, I need to have somebody like kick me in the ribs for it, for it to happen. And that's what happened with this visit. And uh, um, realizing what was, what was fantastic about the four and a half years and why I wrote the book was um, it was, it was a, a realization that the answers are actually there, and what you were referring to as, as our, is our system broken? And see, this is what I've realized over the four and a half years was that we, we this, was a, this is the fact. We're talking about our country here, the United States. It was built on slavery, okay? So we're, we're, we're aware of that. You look at any election, you'll see the line. It's the same line that existed. It's still there. It's still, it's, it's all in the genetics. What happens is when, when we're talking about, about when, we, when you hear the term, uh, the education gap, what, you're, what that's referring to, the achievement gap, it's referring to low-income inner-city kids versus, which are traditionally African-American and Hispanic kids, versus their white suburban counterparts, and the difference between that education. That's what we're talking about when we say the education gap. 
it is, it is directly related to this subject of that we are a country built on the back of slavery and that sin of slavery and that mentality that's still there in the genetics of, of everything that we do. It's whispered now, but it's still there to all the kids and everything. You're not, you know, you can't, you, you know, you're worthless and we, you don't have opportunity. We, we're not listening to you. What you have, what you're thinking, what you're saying is not of meaning to us. All those things are whispered constantly the moment they walk in and out of that school. And what you find that there is a, in the research, that there is a set of things that when done together actually closes this gap. And, and what it, it kind of does is buffer you from from all of this thing, that creating a cocoon around the kids and saying, we're going to create a whole nother country right here and we're going to whisper to you just the opposite things. And it's a fascinating thing. We can talk all about what those things are, but it's it, what, what, what you guys were referring to, Tess, was that when you look, when you, take, when you take the schools of low poverty out of the United States and you compare our public education system to the rest of the world, we lead. We lead the world. And when we add, add those schools back, which again is a very certain population, the population that we just spoke of, that isolate that group out, we're suddenly way below where everyone should be and where we'd want this country to be. And so it's fascinating. It is about, it is about a specific group that we're, that we're right. neglecting. And so what we're talking about here is that conventional wisdom isn't always very wise, right? We, we think we know what the cause is of something or what the problem is, and it, it, it's something that is just off of that, uh, either a little bit or quite a lot. And I think what will surprise people most uh, that I found really interesting in your book is that the usual suspects uh, do not make an appearance as one of your five keys to education reform. So you have things like uh, class size, um, how much is spent, on schools and school systems, even teacher pay. All of those subjects that we hear time and time again as people talk about education reform. And not only do they not make an appearance in your five keys, but you talk about how there actually have not been really, really good long randomized studies to show that those are the cause. That, that must have surprised you. It was a surprise to me to read it. Yeah, you know what, what I guess w w this is a very heated topic as you probably all know. You know, when we're talking about children and all this stuff, everyone gets heated on all sides. And I guess one of the benefits of, the, of this, you know, of, of approaching something that isn't my field was I don't have any horse in the game at all. All I wanted to do was talk to everybody. And in fact, the book has, I hope, no opinions from me. It really was laying out, this is the research about smoking. This is a research about exercise, the equivalent of those things. Because when I came into the thing, came into the field and I just said, you know, what, 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 what works and what doesn't, you'd have this person say, let's say, for example, classroom size, 100%, small classroom size. And this person saying, classroom size, doesn't, that doesn't mean anything. And they're both significant individuals in the field and you keep getting that. And then at the beginning of the research, when you put it all on the table, it's confusing. It seems contradictory. It doesn't, it doesn't fall into place and it feels discouraging. And, and, and it was, you know, it's that thing of waiting for that moment where you're looking at it from a different, a different perspective, go, this has to make sense. There, there, there's this, because it's all working very evenly all over the country. It's, it's working, there's, there are rules. What are the rules? You know, and how, does, how do you move the system? And so it was a fascinating thing to, to one day, we can talk about when that kind of, I had this like house moment, you, you watch House? Yeah. You know where House gets like, he's bowling and he sees, he's like suddenly gets the answer to how to cure the patient. It was like, they had like a house moment at dinner. At, I was like, oh my gosh, that's how to, to look at the research. Yeah, well talk about that a little bit because um, <laughs> you were actually talking with a doctor and, um, ask, and, and you did, you had that, I mean if you're familiar with the TV show House, he always like about, I don't know, three quarters of the way through, he's doing something completely unrelated and all of a sudden he's like, oh, I just solved a big medical problem. <laughs> and you had that moment and it led you really to this notion that um, there is really no single answer. It is not class size. It is not, you know, all these other things that we know, but everything has to come together in the same way as our health does. Yeah, you know what it was? We were at dinner with our friends who are doctors at the University of Penn, and, and one of uh, the, our friends teaches the, the new hotshot residents who come in, um, and so he's, he's the head, and 
he teaches the hotshot residents this thing. He was telling us over dinner, we were eating pasta, and he was, he was joking, and he was talking nothing. We weren't talking anything to do with education. And he said, he teaches the residents this. Hey, guys, you need to tell your patients this, that if they eat a balanced diet, exercise three times a week, um, don't smoke, you know, um, sleep eight hours a day, you know, and have a relatively low stress, you know, work environment where you're keeping track of your mental health. You do those five things, your chances of getting all diseases drop. It beats every medicine, every single thing. What mom told you is correct. And, and you do them, and it, and it, and it drops to almost, almost the entire system is healthy because the body wants to be healthy. But then he said, but this is the thing you got to tell your patients. If they don't do one of those things, so let's say they smoke, but they exercise three times a week and they eat bounce outside, your chances go right back to the norm. They start booing back up to the norm. So what happens in that scenario is you get a lot of false negatives, right? So you'll get guys who drop dead on the treadmill. Oh man, exercising must be bad for you, right? And it, you, know, you get a lot of these confusing reactions. I went, oh my gosh, that's it. That, that body is a system, so, and, and, the, and the education, you know, our field is a system. So is there five things, six things, ten things, when you do them together, buoy the system up and work every time they support each other, but if you don't do one of them, you get false negatives all over the place. And that's why you're getting all these contrary systems, contrary research findings and all that stuff. And that's what, with that, with that kind of mindset, we went in and started categorizing the information and started looking at it. And as it turned out, it was just that. It was just that. There were these five things that the research had shown that when you do them together, they, they, help, they kind of have this catalyzing effect, like turbocharging it, and they, each, and they each work. When you do them in isolation, they have false positives, false negatives, that kind of thing. And it was a fascinating thing to see. And then once we, we did that and looked at it, we checked our answers against the 50, 60 schools in the United States that had closed the gap all on their own, that had figured out how to do this, every single one of them was doing these things. Every single one of them. They had figured it out on their own just by, by the fire, you know, figuring out Jeffrey Canada and Harlem, whoever it is, whoever we're talking about that closed the gap with, the, with his kids or their kids or her kids, they, did, they do, were doing these things and it was fascinating. So then this, I've been talking now going to, you know, um, talking with superintendents and things like that. It shouldn't take me four and a half years with all my resources and my ability to talk to everybody four and a half years to get this list so I can tell you smoking is bad for you. That's crazy. This, this list, it, it should be available because the brilliant people have done this already and has, have, have you know, figured this out for us. So this book was really like, like 101 for every parent, for everybody, everybody who's signing a law, everyone who's starting a school, everybody, everybody just saying this is what the research says just so you're clear, you shouldn't smoke. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, so let's go very quickly through those five keys, um, you know, that, that taken together can turn us into a healthy education system. You know, I, have, I, I usually have a little ten tendency to shy away when I'm like on a talk show or something like that, and they go, so what are the five keys, Knight? And <laughs> throw them up there, and then they put the big thing on there, and I'm like, ah, you know, because it's, you, you want to make sure that they understand how interrelated, it's complicated, that's why I put it, so that the, the depth of why they work is understood. So let's say, for example, one of them is that we found that in the research, the, the research supports that when principals are spending 80% of their time teaching teachers, that's, that's when it starts closing the gap, right? They, when I say that, that means they're going in and out of classrooms 80% of their day going, hey, Mr. Kopinski, you should, you should call on Sarah, who's in the back. Make her come forward. You know, you should walk this way. You should, you should assign your assignments in this manner. You should use this kind of, you know, cadence and those kind of things. When they're constantly, and then, and then he's like, wow, that's great. And then he checks on them again and again and again and again and again and again. They all feel supported. And all the teachers rise to a, a place like that, you know, that's a higher place. And they also, we also find in the research that those principles that create an incredibly consistent culture in their schools, it doesn't have to be the same culture. It's a consistent culture and everyone buys into it. You get this kind of cocoon effect that I was referring to, where you're, 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 you're saying something louder than the one that the United States is saying to these kids. It's saying it louder with more conviction because every single person is buying it. When principals do those two, thi two things, 
they, 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 they bring, they are, that's one of the tenants like that. So, for example, so now that's tied to another one. I'll pick, I'll pick, I'll pick another one. So small schools, you guys have heard a lot about small schools, right? The Gates Foundation and all that stuff supported it. Then, then there was a question about whether it worked or didn't work and that kind of thing. Doing small schools by itself is, is like, is the equivalent of saying, I'm not smoking, I'm healthy, right? That's, yes, you, you shouldn't smoke, <laughs> right? But so the reason that the small schools thing works with the others is because you can't do what I just described, right? If she's the principal, she can't do that with 800 kids and, you know, that many more teachers at that level. You know, the level of data that needs to be given to the teachers, the level of um, going to the, that, is, so it just creates an environment where she doesn't have to be Michael Jordan to succeed. She can be talented and succeed, you know? So you're trying to create a system that's sustainable and, you know, can, can, everyone can win at it. So those are like two examples of how, how two, two of the pieces work together. So, and, and there are other three, all, they're all basically all spikes off the, of stars, like, that are aiming towards making the teacher, um, which is the most important thing, the teacher have the best opportunity to succeed. So, you, you know, all of it, the small schools, the, the principals, and all the rest that we could talk about are all for the teacher. Mm -hmm. So you can find the other three in the book. <laughs> Um, and I really want to be Michael Jordan, actually. <laughs> um, well, just to, to, to wrap up here, I, I want to get a sense from you of what it's been like for you to go into this entirely kind of foreign world. Right. Um, you are well known around the world for movies, and all of a sudden, here you are writing a book about education reform. First of all, is it hard to convince people that you're an authority? Now. Yes, well. Um, and second of all, what, what's it been like for you? It's well, a real transition. You, know, two, you know, two things I want to answer that. One is, first of all, you shouldn't listen to me. I'm an idiot. This <laughs> is, they're, they're all brilliant people that the research is. This is, this is not, I didn't, I didn't figure out that smoking is bad for you. That's, a, you know, that's all, the, all the people. I'm just saying this is the information on the table so that a novice like me could learn, a student like me. I want, you know, the equivalent of me, if a, if a mom of an inner city kid can, can have this information, like I wanted the information, that's the most important thing. You know, I, I think ultimately it comes from a belief in me, like a philosophy thing. I was talking about this with my cousin last night about, you know, I, f I fundamentally believe in our individual powers to, to do what we want and, and to be one amazing people. And I, and I think the world teaches us the opposite, that whatever, whether it's religion and whether it's the society that teaches, whatever's great is out there. And, and it's not inherently here, and I, I don't buy that. And I, and I don't want our system to teach that to the kids. And, and that, that, relate, that, that feeling of empowerment is something that, that drives me. You know, um, I, was, I, I taught um, uh, one day with Teach for America in this school in, 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 uh, in Philly. In not, in, you know, it was a struggling school. And I went in to teach, and all the students were there. And it was like, they, they, some of them were like this, and some of them were like this, and like this. And so I said something, you know, really, really provocative. I was like, I was just trying to be provocative. I was like, word for word, I think I'm the highest, one of the highest paid writers in the entire world. You know, and everybody sat up. And I said, so how did, I, how did that happen? And they raised their hands, and one said, you know, luck? And I was like, maybe, yes, sure, but there's, you know, there's a lot of lucky people out there. And they said, you know somebody? And I was like, nah, my family's all Indians. We don't know anybody. <laughs> we don't know anybody. Uh, and, and, uh, and then I said, you know, I've thought about it a lot. And I think, you know, I write my stuff in Philly. And I have no, you know, no connections to anybody. And, you know, I've made everything that I've written, pretty much everything I've written since puberty has been made into a movie. And... And the, 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 for me, I said to the, the girl that was in the front who was kind of like this, I was saying, you know, the answer for me is to this question of how does this happen was, I, I am more me than other people are them. And I'm, I, I'm just telling you how I feel, what I am, my flaws, my limitations, my, my ego, my, my, my insecurities, and I put it down on a piece of paper. And you can, you can intuitively tell I'm being honest and it stands out like a light. So I was saying to the girl in the front, I said, you need to tell me, tell your story to everybody. You just be you. Tell me what it's like to, to not understand the principal on your speaker, because I can't understand him. And, that, and that's crazy. 
And she was staring at me. I said, tell me why you're, you're sitting like that. Why that look in your eyes? Why, whatever happened in your house, why this? Why the person next to you is making you feel that way? And I can never write you better than that. You, you would, you would, you'll stand out like a light, and you'll be valuable to all of us. And I said, you have to believe that your, your ex particular experience is valuable to all of us. And just that little thing, you saw like the 25 kids get sparked and feel empowered. And that's general, gen genuinely how I feel about life. All right. The book is I Got Schooled. Are you going to make a movie out of this? <laughs> <laughs> M. Night Shyamalan. Thank you so Thank much. You so much. <laughs> that was great. Thank you very much. <laughs>